Our next presenter is Carrie Orbaker. Uh, do you have her? I kind of got to wait till you're done to get the audio working. Oh, right. She's on. Though. Oh, she's on. Yeah. So Carrie's doing it remotely from her office back in Cisco, uh, and she uh, she's going to talk about spare parts and what you need uh, in order to keep your plant running and things. Uh, so she was supposed to be just before lunch. She's now just after lunch, so everything else is just going to flow. Uh, I know most of these presentations, and I know the people that are giving them, except for our resident comedian, Reggie. Uh, <laughs> things should go away pretty quickly. Uh, through, through things, you never know with Reggie. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, we'll go, go through these, and then we'll break as appropriate. Uh, and we might move one thing to the other side of the break or something, but that's not a big deal. We'll, we'll get through it. We'll, we'll just keep going through all the uh, discussion items. All right. So Gary Orbaker is going to do her presentation like Eric did remotely. He's only about two miles away in the offices, <laughs> but uh, I'll turn off the mic now so that we can do the speakers. Thank you. I did edit my version a little bit too, just to try to shorten it a little bit. Since we're a little pressed for time, but spare parts. Yay, they're fun. <laughs> Come on. Hopefully I don't have too many technical difficulties. I've been having a lot of those lately. So in your O&M manual, there is a list of recommended spare parts. It's appendix O. And the list is divided into five levels. Hey, Carrie. These are the levels. Yeah? Um, I don't Can know you how me? long ago you started. Yeah, can you start over? Because we just connected. Oh, OK, sorry. Um, oh, I don't need to go back. It just says spare parts, but um, your O&M manuals have a list of recommended spare parts. It's found in Appendix O, and the list is divided into these five levels. Consumables, general maintenance, critical emergency repairs, non-critical component replacement, and five-year maintenance. Level one consumables. These are expected to be replaced, usually during preventative maintenance. Um, that schedule is also in Appendix O of your O&M manual. And these are the items that are generally found in a level one list of spare parts. Just normal things that wear and tear items that you have to replace because otherwise stuff doesn't work right. Pump rebuild kits. These are super fun, specifically the analyzer pump rebuild kits and the analyzer pumps themselves. Oh, anyway. So there's only really one way to be sure you get the kit that you need for the pumps that you have. And that's to look at the stupid sticker on the pump. Because analyzer manufacturers just they change their pumps all the time. They don't tell us. We don't always know. They kind of look the same. They're not, it, there's a lot of versions of pumps. None of the rebuild kits are interchangeable. They're all very specific to the pump that is in your analyzer. And these are both Tappy uh, Teledyne stickers, but Thermo does the same thing. Um, I don't think I've ever looked at a Servomax one. I don't know how there's this works at all, but Tabbies and Thermos, they change their pumps all the time. And if you buy a replacement pump and then put that in, it might be different than the one you're replacing. They, they make them so they fit, but the rebuild kits are not interchangeable. So that's the only way that you can know for sure that you're going to get the rebuild kit that fits the pump that you have. That's not a fun thing to find out. And it says now available, but really it's been, they've been available for two years, two and a half years. Um, <laughs> well, it's still now, but those are complete probe maintenance kits. So that you only have to order one for each type of probe. And then you get all of the things that you're supposed to replace when you do your maintenance of the probe. Just makes it a little easier. Some of you with newer jobs 
know that because they've been putting them on there since I think two and a half years ago. And then level two, general or corrective maintenance. Again, some of these are the um, procedures that are listed that you're supposed to perform on some kind of periodic basis. And these are just, if you notice that something's out, you, you're, you replace it. Um, a lot of analyzer components usually fall into this level. So, Shane, are, are we still okay? Shane? Okay. My thing just had a message down at the bottom that said bad network something. Anyway. No, we're um, good. Okay. I'll ignore the messages then when they pop up in my face. Um, so, yeah, you may or may not need to replace these, usually on some kind of regular basis, maybe not every time. If it's an annual maintenance, you might not have to do it every time, but it's good to have them on hand for when you do need to replace them. Um, because otherwise it's not like you can run to Walmart usually and grab whatever you need. Level three, critical emergency repairs. All kind of controllers, PLCs, network equipment, uh, temperature controllers, pumps. Pumps are in almost every level. Some kind of pump is generally in each level. Um, I think the analyzer pumps are supposed to be rebuilt once per year. You know, the sample pumps are as needed, but you're supposed to check it once a year, I think. Um, and it is always good to have an extra full pump assembly on hand in case when you rebuild it, it doesn't work. Um, but this is level three is kind of a, I don't know, there, I've not seen all that many PLCs fail. They, they Usually you're going to replace your system before the PLCs actually stop working. There, there is an occasional one here and there that it, it, it could fail. I just, it doesn't seem to happen all that often. And that's generally half of how much the entire spares for that level cost. Um, so it's, I guess, I mean, it is always good to have whatever on hand good yours stop working, but they're kind of expensive. So there's a lot of stuff that might just sit there and then be obsolete before you're going to need to use it. Don't shoot me engineering. Level four, non-critical component replacement. And that's just, I don't know, I'm non-critical because you can still operate. Um, doesn't take anything else down usually, but not good. And most of these, not so much the, the dryers, but gauges, um, the switches, flow meters, they're not usually terribly expensive and they, they don't get obsolete. Well, they do, but not quite like um, anything that's software related. So these are always good to have on hand. The total cost is not usually that much and there's some cost stuff at the end just for an idea of what a typical anything is. Level five is the five-year maintenance. These are our analyzers and everything that costs a lot, but their life expectancy is usually up to five years. Some of them will last another five years. Some of them will last even longer than that. But these are long lead time items. They require programming. They're specific to your site. They're definitely not sitting on anyone's shelf anywhere, just waiting to be needed somewhere. Um, so they are definitely recommended to have um, if they apply to your system. Um, the anything, the analyzers, OIT panels, all that stuff comes here first. So it gets program specifically or set up for your site so that it can, you know, get to you and when you need it, it's it's ready to use. It doesn't require any 
other programming or setup. Um, heated sample lines, they just generally have long lead times and there's not really much of an emergency response to one because the manufacturers just, they, they take as long as they take to make them. And they can be interchanged a bit, but not usually, especially because they're all different lengths and have different requirements. And I, they are expensive to just be sitting on a shelf somewhere, but they don't go bad sitting on your shelf anywhere. I've asked. And then here is the, um, just a, it's an average for the most part um, of, for each system, but a system, I use that term somewhat loosely. Um, ammonia systems tend to cost a little bit more, they have extra stuff, but in general, this is what a typical um, spare parts cost looks by level. So you definitely wanna have the level one and twos, because consumables, stuff you're gonna need for maintenance, not terribly expensive, doesn't go bad when it's sitting on your shelf usually. Um, the exception to that would be uh, an ammonia scrubber. They, they have a, they can't sit forever or they aren't very useful anymore. Um, so those you sort of have to buy at a more regular basis to keep them current. Um, level three, those are all those controllers. Um, PLCs, about half the cost are just the PLCs, it, generally. So, it, in this, you can take $13,000 off, perhaps, only if you gamble. If you don't, then it's just buy everything, because you might need it, and it's good to have. Um, again, the level four, uh, stuff is not terribly expensive and the analyzers obviously are always and they go obsolete not not obsolete but usually you can use them for as long as there's parts available but there are some that last a really long time and our analyzer repair shop is really good at repairing them so when they get sent here they, they send it back right away, usually fixed, all ready to go again, no matter how old it is. I don't know how they do that, but they do. And they do a great job at it. So it's overall, it seems like a lot, but if it means that you can do all of your maintenance and not have to worry about parts, it, it should be budgeted for to some degree. And then ordering of spare parts, if you buy them from us, we try to keep um, a certain level of all the, the generally recommended spares for levels one, two, and four um, in stock. We often will have ones from levels three and five, just because we have a lot of stuff here. Um, if there was something that we tend to always use a certain part, but it was specified to use a different part. We, we usually don't stock those items unless that happens a lot, which I don't know that it ever has. But at that point, we would evaluate it and consider putting it in stock so that it's available when you need it. Um, and we have been really good lately about shipping when we have items in stock. If everything in your order is in stock, it usually will ship the next day or the day after that. It's only when there is a special item or something that has to be specifically ordered, we usually will wait, unless you mentioned that you need something right away, and then we'll ship it right away. And then the email address to send um, requests for quotes and POs to is orders at ciscosems.com, or you can always call us, and we can either tell you over the phone or send you a quote if you need it. Uh, an actual quote. Um, and then there's always people here to talk to if you have questions. So that's the abbreviated version of spare parts. I don't imagine there's too many questions. 
Are there questions? No. Okay. Not Very good. Us. Well, then from who? <laughs> sure. who? Who else would they be from? Okay. Very good. Thank you much and enjoy the rest of the meeting.